In the hospital, actually, I said I was going to quit. Like, I was done racing. I almost died, so, like, I'm, I'm giving it up. Like, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to go work at Haunted Houston. And that's what I did for about six months, I'd say. <clears throat> and I just, I just worked at the shop, let my face heal, and was actually released to ride six months later. And I was just going to go out and ride for fun. And the second I rode, that, that all changed. So I started riding when I was three years old. Didn't really ride all that much because my dad was still racing pro around this area and trying to make money racing as well as working. And uh, so when I got a little bit younger, he slowly started to get me into riding a little bit more. And by the time I was eight, I actually did my first race. And that was at a, uh, a track actually not far from the Houston area off Mills Road. And I just remember that first race, I, I still remember it because it was just one of those stories you can't forget. I, I lined up on the line and it was, I was actually on a 65 for my first race. I didn't even race on 50s. And uh, right when the gate dropped, I don't know if it was either nerves or just, just me freaking out from being in my first race, but I dumped the clutch way too hard and looped out, which is when your bike just takes off from you. Right, on the, right off the starting gate, about five foot out, and thought this was the first, this is the best way to start a first race. I just looped out about five foot out of the gate, but uh, yeah, just from there, I just slowly started getting better, figured out how to work the clutch on a 65, then I would move up to 85, still sticking around Houston, Still kind of a mid-pack rider, I'd be a little bit more towards the back and um, slowly on 85s, about my last year before I moved up to a big bike, which is a 250, I, uh, I started to do a lot better and that's when I realized that I kind of had potential to make this uh, my career and right on the last year at 85s, I made it to my first ever uh, Loretta Lens, which is the biggest amateur national in America. I made it there and did pretty well, I got 11th. And then the next year I did even better, I got fifth. And then the next year I went out and won at uh, Loretta Lens. And right then was pretty much the time when I decided, okay, this is, this is what I can do. If I won at Loretta Lens, I'm the best out of the country in this class. And uh, pretty much from there, I just started picking away at it, turned pro a couple years later. and. Uh, just been growing and racing pro ever since. Had a couple injuries, but uh, every year has been going a little bit better and a little bit better, and uh, I'm just super blessed to be able to do this. Going through amateurs, I was always really solid, climbing up the ranks, never really got hurt, but uh, I had a couple small injuries, but nothing, nothing really too bad. I broke a wrist uh, like my second year on 250s, which wasn't too bad, they just placed it put it back into place and it, it was good to go and uh, but so yeah through my amateur career I was always pretty injury free and uh, it it just really sucked that when I turned pro it just seemed to be injury after injury after injury the first three years or so and uh, getting ready for Supercross there was this little local race at this track in, uh, in San Antonio Texas and it was a night race so I couldn't really see that well and I just went off this jump wrong and took my foot off the peg and I superman through the air, landed on my face and somehow I didn't get knocked out but my face immediately swole up and my back was hurt. They had to take me to the ambulance, my face was swole up, I couldn't even really see on the way to the hospital. They had to transfer me to hospitals because it ended up being really bad and what ended up happening is I fractured my skull and my four different spots, two in my forehead, my eye socket, like my nose, and uh, they had to do surgery a couple days after, split me open from year to year, and now I actually have a plate right in my forehead right here. So that was definitely really, really scary, and kinda, kinda gives me chills when I look back on it, cause I was uh, pretty close to like death right there in that scenario. My first couple years pro were crazy. I mean, my first year pro was definitely the craziest. And the next years seem to come a little bit easier. And then this year is a little bit easier. So each year it's getting 
better because I'm figuring out how to do it and figuring out my expenses that I need and everything that I need covered. And uh, just the first year was was really hectic. I mean, am I even gonna get, make enough money for next weekend? Like, am I even gonna make enough money to make it to the next race? Like, I'm lining up next to the baddest dudes and they're making a comfortable living and I'm just struggling. Like, trying to find money from any different person, all my different friends, my family is pitching in, like, so many different friends that like don't even have that much money or like helping me out each weekend to get to each race like just literally struggling to get to each race and uh you know i i was doing it there for a while where i would literally call someone up like on the friday like or thursday before i would leave and be like hey like i thought i would have enough money for this weekend but I don't. Can you like pitch me some money so I can just pin it up to this race real quick and hopefully make enough money to get to the next weekend? Now that I'm doing better and I'm fortunate enough to have people help me to really relieve that stress has been really a blessing. This, this past year has been uh, way great and I really think that's why I'm, I'm doing a little bit better now is because I don't really have to stress about trying to call all these different people up and ask for money. I'm just, I have all these different people now that are already lined up to help me get to each race and it's just really been awesome this past year to be able to do that. I don't really have an ex a response to when I'm going to give up racing and get a normal job. I mean, I'm doing my dream job and chasing the dream. So, I mean, if I keep paying the bills and I'm doing what I love, I mean, I don't know. I, when people ask me that question, I just, I kind of just, it's not really disrespectful, but uh, I don't like to hear it, and uh, I don't really have an answer for it either, because I love what I do, I don't want to give it up.